Hey everyone, what's up? Um, yeah, uh, just to let you know, this is a third uh, edition of my podcast, if you will, that you can only hear on YouTube right now, maybe on SoundCloud, uh, all depending. Uh, but anyway, I, I, w- I want to talk about something that really, I think, I want to talk about a few things that really, you know, kind of get me at first. Now, now let you guys know. First of all, I'm not using the digital video, uh, digital audio record, the digital recorder right now, digital voice recorder um, that I bought. Uh, for some of you that may not seen the video yet, or even if the video is up by now, uh, basically I'm still using my camera. Uh, the reason being is because the digital voice recorder I bought for about twenty nine something or less, uh, thanks to my uh, store discount. Or my employee discount, I should say. It does not have a USB port. Doesn't mean it's not worth the money because it still is. I mean, the way I look at it, I could record on it. I could put the freaking speaker in front of a microphone, and it can go from there. No, no doubt about that. So, I could still do that. I could go off and do something else, and that could be recording. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, but, but, but what I did do and sort of like an early birthday gift to myself is I got four items from Amazon and they should probably be here by at least Monday, maybe the earliest being this weekend, but I seriously doubt it. Um, and basically one of those is another digital voice recorder, but this time it's, uh, a little bit bigger. Well, not bigger, but it's a little bit more, well, bigger gigabyte-wise, but it's a little bit more uh, nicer and newer. You could tell just by the comments, because the comments are 2,000, by the comments from people that have purchased it uh, are all 2014. So, uh, this one, uh, you know, it it, it cost me probably a little bit more than, than what it would, than what this one did. And I think there was one similar at my job, but the one at my job said 720 hours, and it was 2 gigabytes. So I figured, well, I could get that, but then again, you know, maybe someone's going to get it anyway, especially with school starting up, they're willing to sacrifice that money. And I'd rather just, you know, be, you know make sure I have something right then and there to, um, you know, to have. And basically the reason I got this, and this is something that I think anybody needs to do. Uh, the reason I got this is because of topics, of things like topics on my mind, uh, for things like the podcast. So that way, if like if I'm heading to work, I can record myself doing a podcast, or I can record myself doing a a review for like Sonic the Hedgehog or whatever in audio format, and then I could just go home and I could post it on. I could just upload it onto my computer, and go from there and use Windows DVD Maker to, I mean, not DVD Maker, but Windows Movie Maker, I should say, to basically create the, you know, create the video, you know, and not have to worry about using the Rock Band mic all the time, because the Rock Band mic, you know, is for Rock Band, even though it's a good substitute. I mean, I mean, a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, use the Rock Band mic, so whatever mics they got for their uh, band uh, game gaming systems or band gaming setups and all that, you know, for the audio presentations and the podcast. But you know, this is me. You know, I'm doing it my way, and and uh, it's my birthday basically coming up. So I figure, but well, you know what? It's going to come the week of my birthday. Be an early birthday gift to myself. Uh, it's also coming along with uh, a few Blu-rays, of course. Uh, one of the Blu-rays is Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Bonds Beyond Time, which I thought honestly had already come out on Blu-ray, but apparently it only came on came out on Blu-ray in Japan, and I think in the UK, but never here in the United States. And so I finally got that. What's funny though is my job uh, has the movie as well, but it only has the DVD. It doesn't have you know any section for a Blu-ray; it just has the DVD. And that's something else I'll talk about a little bit. Uh, I also have uh, Superman Doomsday, the Blu-ray edition, and I have uh, um, Spirit Stallion as a Cimarron, which has finally come out on Blu-ray. So I got those coming, and there's a few other movies and uh, Blu-rays and stuff that I still need to get down the line, 
uh, but that might happen within the next week or so, maybe in the last week uh, of of the month of this month, uh, going into August. So we'll we'll see what happens from there. But yeah, I basically have not one but two digital voice recorders soon. To, well, another one soon to be in my possession. Hopefully by the by the start of next week. Um, the 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 reason. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what am I going to do with the other one? Well, the other one, like I said, is always used for backup. And can, well, basically be used for backup and also basically be used to kind of help my, my mom out a little bit and help me out a little bit, remember things that we had forgotten. So, uh, for example, when we leave the house, she always wants to make sure, did I do this? Did I lock that? Did I do this? Did I lock that? So what I'm thinking we could do and I don't know if she'd like it or not, is basically we could use the digital recorder for her to record her locking up things and or checking things, making sure everything's locked. And then when she possibly gets into the, into the truck, or we get into the truck or whatever, just turn on the recorder and say, okay, let's see if you did. Click it, boom, 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 boom. So it would work. And uh, to me, that, that that that's a good idea so that way we don't forget and that way we'll be like did did we do this did we do that and so on and so forth so i think that would be a great idea and i think that's a good idea for anybody you know these things are not just you know sold and used to do um uh to do you know different things with you know they're sold and used to do a lot with and you know heck i could probably tomorrow if i feel like it take it with me to work and record some things at work so they can get an idea of this is what i do at work even though it's through audio format this is what i do at work so yeah i mean it it would be nice to do that but then again the battery life i don't know how long that's going to last because they came with their own batteries but we'll see what happens uh, but, you know, speaking of my work and speaking about any other retail stores out there, it, it's kind of weird how at my job, and I think some other retail stores as well, that when a movie or, yeah, basically a movie or so gets released to DVD and Blu-ray for the first time, that or gets re-released onto DVD and gets released onto Blu-ray for the first time, that for some odd reason, the retail stores only have the DVD versions. And that's kind of what ticks me off a little bit, you know, even with my job. Because I remember back a few months ago when the Chipmunk Adventure came out. And I remember thinking... I remember just hoping my job was going to have both the DVD and the Blu-ray version. And all they had was the DVD version. So I was glad to basically say, you know what, I have the, I could get the, so I was kind of glad that I could get the Blu-ray version through Amazon. And that's what I did. Um, And the same could be said for Yu-Gi-Oh! Bonds Beyond Time. I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, here's a very popular, you know, anime um, combining two, uh, three, combining the three most recent series before Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Zexol, or whatever it's called, uh, or basically before the more recent Yu-Gi-Oh! series. And you would think to yourself, well, why wouldn't they have the Blu-ray? I don't know. It's kind of crazy. So... Again, I'm kind of glad Amazon picks up the slack and says, "Hey, we'll put the blue. We have the Blu-ray. Just come get it from us." And again, I just don't understand that with retail stores like mine. You know, it's just weird. I mean, you could. I mean, even the Outsiders. You know, you would think that with the complete novel edition coming out on Blu-ray for the first time, that they would have that uh, for sale, but they didn't. I mean, yeah, they have some Blu-rays. Uh, out and all that, like they had the complete classic Planet of, uh, Planet of the Apes uh, movie series from the 1970s, you know, from the late 60s and mostly the 70s on uh, on Blu-ray, 
So that was good. You know, the, I mean, there are some things they do release on Blu-ray, but to me, it's just, I, I, I just don't understand it. I just don't get it. And that's always been a problem, in my opinion. That if you're going to release all these movies, you need to release them in both formats. I mean, how would people feel? I mean, today, I got, or today, or actually yesterday, well, today, seeing as though I got off at 1230 and all that, uh, but yesterday, today, yesterday, or whatever, I got Rio 2. So now I have both Rio movies. I have Rio 1 on DVD, and now I have Rio 2 on Blu-ray and DVD. But I got the special, I I got the special uh, slap band edition that you can only get at my job. And I, I looked at, I looked at this, and you know, and I looked at this, and well, first of all, here's what's surprising: the Blu-ray just by itself costs twenty two ninety six. The DV, this gift set, if you will, that was a, a store exclusive, that was exclusive to my store, I should say, cost four dollars less. And you would think with the slap band added to it that they would be a little bit more, but it wasn't. I mean, heck, the Lego Movie gift set, which is still there, costs more. So, so what's the big deal? I, 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 I don't get it. I, I really don't. So, to me, you know, when I think about it, how would, but again, getting back to this other topic, how would people feel? How would people feel? If all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the, when, I mean, how would people feel when Rio 2 comes out on DVD, on home video, basically, how would they feel if just the retail stores just released the DVDs, and that's it, and no Blu-rays, even though you know there's a Blu-ray? Hold on for a second. Sorry about that, but again, you know, how would people feel if, you know, they go to a retail store and all they have is the DVD versions, or even the digital HD versions, but no Blu-rays? How would they feel? How would they feel knowing they'd have to go online to places like Amazon only and just get them? They wouldn't feel good, would they? They'd be like, why do I have to go on Amazon to get the Blu-ray version of this movie when I could just go to my store over here and get it here? Doesn't make any sense. Now, I know some of you think, well, it all depends on what retail stores have them. Well, all retail stores basically are about the same. They should have about the same kind of products. But, again, you know, how would people feel? You know, it, it, it's basically something that, when you think about it, just doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. You know, if you're going to release the DVD version, you might as well do the Blu-ray version. Makes sense, doesn't it? Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me in the long run. I mean, I know if I was running a, a retail store of some kind, I'd make sure to order the Blu-ray versions as well as the DVD versions. That way people can have their choice. I mean, again, how would people feel if, you know, they go to get Rio 2 and, all the, and you know, they have thinking, oh, we're going to go to the Target or the Walmart or the Kmart or wherever, and all they have was the DVD versions and no Blu-rays. And knowing that they, and they're going there specifically thinking, oh, we're going to get the Blu-rays. They wouldn't be happy. They wouldn't be happy with the fact, oh, we got to go on Amazon.com or we got to go to Walmart or Target.com or Kmart.com and get it and wait for a few days, maybe a week. They wouldn't like it. 
I mean, heck, when Spirit Stallion of Zimmeron came back out, you know, yeah, my store has the DVD, but we don't have the Blu-ray. And I would like to see the movie on Blu-ray. I have a Blu-ray player now. I'd like to see the movie on Blu-ray. You know? Yeah, I, I would like to see it. I mean, you know, I have a lot of Blu-rays that I'm looking at right now, even though it's kind of dark right now, but still, I have Blu-rays. Yeah, I, I have Blu-rays here that, you know, some I had to get through DVD, through Amazon, and some I had to get, some I was fortunate enough to get at my job, but some through Amazon. You know, like the Chipmunk Adventure, um, Space Jam, you know, these are Blu-rays I had to get through Amazon because, of course, you know, my, my store didn't carry the Blu-rays, and that's what's kind of crazy. And, and, and again, you would think... A store like mine, a store like Target, a store like Kmart, you know, they would carry them, but they don't. So, and, so it kind of ticks you off a little bit. And this is what, and this is what happens when you have companies like Blockbuster, Borders, maybe some Barnes and Nobles, maybe not. When you have the stores physically go out of business, you basically lose that alternative for people. Now, I'm sure places like Best Buy still, you know, with places like Best Buy still around, yeah, you're going to be able to get both versions there with no problem. But what if you're not in driving distance of a Best Buy? Or walking distance, I should say. Driving distance, yeah, maybe. But let's say the nearest Best Buy is like 30 miles away and you don't want to waste the gas. Just saying. To me, it just doesn't make sense. You know, that a store that's going to sell the Blu-ray, ver the DVD version, doesn't sell the Blu-ray version. Doesn't make sense. And I, I, I just don't get it. I, I really don't. I mean, heck, my, my store is, at, you know, in you know, speaking of these kind of things, you know, you would think that the store would sell a series, the entire an entire series on DVD, even or even Blu-ray. As a complete set, especially when a movie based on it's out, you know you have Transformers: Age of Extinction. My store is bringing back out the Transformer uh, DVDs by Shout Factory, but not as a set. They're just bringing them out as individual volumes. And you would think, well, if we want to, they want to sell more, they want to get more money out of it. Bring out the freaking set. You know what's the problem there? Did, I don't see no problem. Do you? You know. <laughs> You know, these are things that, you know, I think need to be worked on, not just at my store, but at various stores. And it, it's just one of those things that, when, when you think about it, it's it's hard to fathom. It, it, it really is hard to fathom to, to go into a store and knowing, hey, they got the DVD version and maybe they'll have the Blu-ray and you don't see the Blu-ray. It, it's hard to fathom. It really is. Yeah. You know, another thing that's kind of on my mind a little bit, another topic that's on my mind. It's, it, it, it's kind of weird. Now, I'm not trying to be gender specific or anything, but I, I've noticed that. There's a lot of female artists out there, and I hey, don't don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good female artists out there that release great music videos to go along with the singles, along with the singles they bring out for the out on the various albums and all that. There's a lot of great artists that do great, a lot of great female musicians, artists that do that. But here's the one thing that really gets me. You know, I've always noticed that not all female artists at times will go the stop-motion route 
at all. I mean, some will, some won't. I mean, this one girl, like I said, that broke the record with jelly beans used in the music video, she kind of embraced the stop motion deal. Heck, she, one scene where she basically turns into jelly beans and she falls into an ocean and all that you see left is her lips and all that. And, and her lips sprout wings, you know, and all. It's, uh, you know, to me, you could tell that this girl is very creative, very imaginative. You can see that in her music video. You can see it in Elizabeth Cook's Stupid Things music video. You know, you can see it in Kellis's, uh, Kellis, uh, K-E-L-I-S's music video of Get Along With You, especially at the ending. You can see the creativeness when they use stop motion. But when I also look at this, the one thing I notice that they don't use, which really could be used for creativeness, and maybe I need people to let me know about this maybe people need to point the point them out to me but i don't see enough female artists using claymation stop motion claymation um one female artist she was actually a lead singer for this uh, group called elies uh, eat Lees or something like that and their music video was called lose this child and the begin in the way it begins is you have stop motion in the sand. You have a stop motion sand turtle basically burying her eggs and then running off. And then all of a sudden you see the lead female's face, the lead, the band's lead female, the band's lead female singer's face just through stop motion claymation emerge out of the sand. And then her hair is turning into like these little snake creatures going into the sand and then her face disappears into the sand and it... <laughs> And I'm thinking, why can't more female artists use that kind of stuff? I mean, nothing against the male artists. I mean, I know they're good at using that kind of stuff. I mean, take a look at Peter Gabriel with Sledgehammer and and, and Big Time and, and maybe a few others. Take a look at some of the people that have tried to remake Sledgehammer with their own creativity uh, using by using claymation and stop motion. I mean, to me, you would think a female artist would would want would could do this. I mean, I look at some female artists like a Katy Perry. And I say to myself, Katy Perry, heck, you take a look at some of her music videos. This girl is freaking creative. She's imaginative. I mean, when she did her ET video, that was freaking imaginative because she basically starts out as an alien and she's singing in alien form. And she doesn't even look like herself and slowly she turns into a human and into a centaur and it's like, "What in the world?" You know, it's like that's creative. And to to me, you have all these creative female artists that could do that. I mean, Nicki Minaj could do it. You have, you know, like I say, Katy Perry, whether you like her or not, Lady Gaga. I mean, they have all used in somewhat some kind of stop motional creativity. I mean, Lady Gaga, especially this girl's like freaking out there. People don't know what's wrong with this woman at times, but she's creative. She's very expressive in her creativity when it comes to her music videos. But to me, I think they could, but all these women, heck, I can even use one of my favorites, Beyonce. They could all basically use creative, could definitely benefit by having a music video done through claymation. And basically, when I'm talking about, you know, done through claymation, they could basically use this music video to have a claymation version of themselves represented in the video and they could just be there singing the song and and stuff like that but with claymation you can have all sorts of things happen all sorts of unique things happen like you know you could have like through one of Beyonce's romantic hip hop songs or whatever you could have her maybe her face just fade into the black and all you see is her lips singing and then a Lips split apart, and all you see, her, all you see is her eyes dancing, and all that. And the same with Katy Perry, and the same with you know Gaga, and you know, the list goes on. And I think it would bring more creativity. And I'm not saying they need to do it. It's just something I think myself and any other fans of the music would like to see. Because let's face it, if you do stop motion and mostly stop motion claymation claymation 
allows for more uh, creativity, allows for more things to happen in a music video. I mean, why do you think Peter Gabriel, when he did Sledgehammer, why do you think he used it? I mean, when he did this, when he used the line of the lyric line of "I'll be anything you need," through the stop, through the claymation, he showed basically what that of the things he would be. I mean, he showed that he would basically be a pink wall. He showed that he'd be a yin yang face. He he showed that he would be a a, a lake, a river. That uh, he'd be a river, a lake, and the boat, as well as the boat that's you know floating on the lake. He said you know basically showed that he'd be the fish in the lake. You know, he showed he'd be a waterfall. He showed he'd be a mosaic painting. You know, all these sorts of things. And and that was all through claymation. And, and to me, I think that can be done. I think you have enough female artists out there, even enough male artists if they wanted to do it, to get, to get, you know, be, to work, you know, to get to use this stuff that, basically allows for more creativity, more more things going. I mean, you take a look at some of Katy Perry's songs, and you take a look at some of uh, Lady Gaga's songs, and Beyonce's, and Nicki Minaj's songs, and stuff like that, and you say to yourself that some of these things, if done through, and you think to yourself, and you have to say that some of the lyrics in the songs could be really represented well with claymation. With some kind of animation or claymation, in a sense. I mean, claymation, like I said, basically allows for more of that kind of like transformation, kind of like unique happening in a video. I mean, like I said, with with Beyonce, you know, you could have one scene. If she did a video in claymation, you could have one scene to where all of a sudden you see nothing but her eyes, and her eyes are just dancing around. And maybe her eyes turn into people and stuff like that, or or whatever. You know, things like that. And I think it would be tremendous. I think these would be tremendous opportunities. Now, I know some of you listening to this might say, well, nowadays, Brian, they don't really use claymation that much. They just use CGI. So what's the point? And that might be true. But I think if you want to stay true to it, you've got to go that claymation route. I mean, let's think about it. There's a lot of studios. They release movies. In claymation still. And sometimes they blend CGI with claymation. And sometimes they use CGI to make it look. To kind of make a very claymation like. You know movie or show. And it shows. And again. It's because they know with claymation. They could be more creative. And I think a lot of artists. Mostly female artists. Because their music. I'm no offense to the male artist. No offense to the male artist. Because they have some great songs. Don't get me wrong about that. They have some great music. You know. But some of the female artists are more expressive with the videos. Whether it's a dancing hip hop video. Whether it's a romantic video. Whether it's a romantic ballad video. A romantic hip hop song. Or whatever. It, they are, they're more expressive with the words. And they have more meaning to it. And when one thinks about it. And this is coming from someone that's not a music ex- music expert, but when one thinks about it, with the help of something like claymation, whether it's CGI rendered claymation that makes it look like real claymation or actual claymation or a blending of the two, it basically shows, when one thinks about it, it basically, it would basically show off real well with the creativity. Especially if you put someone like Katy Perry, take one of her songs and put it to claymation and stuff like that. Oh my God! I mean, talk about the um, t- talk about the limits you the unlimited limits you can go to. My point is this: I think female artists, and again, no offense to the male artists, because they are very creative with the songs that they they do put a lot of hard work into the music and all that. And they can be expressive, but the female artists are more expressive. And they, in a sense, tell a story with the songs. And I believe that with the help of something like Claymation, they could do a lot more. You know, 
I mean, when you have female artists, you know, use the lyrics in their songs of "I'll be anything you need." You know, not trying to steal something from Peter Gabriel, but when they tell in a song, whether it's a a romantic ballad song or a romantic hip hop song or dance song or whatever, and they say, you know, "I'll be," and they use that song of, and they use the 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 lyric of being anything the lover needs the the person that the lover the boyfriend or what whoever needs to me with the use of claymation they could physically show that they can actually show them becoming anything they need you know if they say you know I'll be such and such this you know like I'll be the house you live in you could physically with claymation you could show them turning into a house and being that house that that person could live in um if they say, oh, I'll be the car you need, they physically turn them into a car. I mean, it works in both ways. And I think, I think honestly, it, it's just something that, to me, a lot of female artists, up and coming, established, you know, they need to consider for future, for future reference. And, and I just think it's something that they need to really look into. So that's just my take on it. You know that that's just that's just my take on it, and you know an, another thing as well. Another thing I'd like to get, get off my chest. You know, we have all we have the announcement of all these movies coming out now being made. You know, we have the announcement of a Sonic live action CGI hybrid movie, which a lot of people are happy about, but kind of like eh, kind of a little bit because they don't know if it's going to be good or not. Even though you got the guy behind Fast and the Furious behind it, you know, so. You know, you got news of that, and you got news of a new Scooby-Doo movie, a Flintstones movie, you know, things like that, Rescue Rangers, finally. And to me, I mean, heck, you even have the announcement that you have an actual Dragon Ball anime movie, Dragon Ball anime movie, coming to theaters here in the U.S., not just in Japan, but right here in the U.S., which has got a lot of people hyped. So... You know, to me, when I when I think about movies that I really think could benefit from being sort of one of those fantasy-like movies and stuff, I look at things like like anime. I look at animes, for example, and I look at animes like Full Metal Alchemist, and the way that's told at times, you can't help but see a live-action movie out of that. And especially with like the effects and CGI and the way things have improved over the years, a full metal metal archimist live action movie with a bit, with some CGI for certain effects and maybe certain characters would really work. And I think with the right with the right um, you know writers and you know directors and producers and creative. It could really be pulled off, and I think that's something that could really be done. You know, and, and that's an anime I think is you know long overdue. Even though it's not that old, I think it's long overdue, especially with you know a sp- it's a spinoff. It's long overdue for maybe a theatrical live action release. You know, I take a look, and what, you know, one of my personal favorite animes is Cowboy Bebop. I mean, my, I mean, think about. Think about the anime, the live action you could get out of that, especially with the special effects and CGI and stuff. I mean, what more could you ask for? I, I mean, this is something that, honestly, I'm really, I would really like to see in the theaters. I would really like to see come to life. And hopefully someday it will. And, you know, because I know that would be a great space western, if you think about it, a modern day space western. Or a modern day space bounty hunter like Western because the the stories you could tell with it. I mean, and you. I, I mean, it's just something that I don't. I think cannot be passed up on, not now or, or or ever. I think it's something that really needs to be capitalized on, and I think anybody might agree with me on that. You know, th- that that's the way I look at it. Another one I think really could benefit from a live action CGI like uh, a live action uh, remake or a live action feature 
with a bit of CGI thrown in there is Revolutionary Girl Utena. And I think that would be great. I think that would be an awesome live action film. And you know what? If I'm the person behind it, if I if that becomes a reality, if I'm the writer, the producer, the director, whoever behind it, I follow, I take examples from the television show, but I mix them in with stuff from the movie, from the anime movie itself. I would do that. I would take I would basically mix elements from both the television series and the anime movie, mix them all together into one live action feature, is especially add in the climax of the anime movie where you have freaking Utena turn into a car. You know, throw that element in. Throw the element in that these people have the special ability when they want to to become cars. And that they can only be reform back through some kind of like bond or some kind of true love bond or something like that to me that would be an, a great a, a live action feature and I know some people might say well Brian that would be more, that would basically be you know yeah it would be a great live action feature but it's main love story would be a lesbian one well heck in today's society that's almost commonplace right why not go there I mean heck if you want to you could change it up but I think it's kind of almost commonplace nowadays, even though a lot of us out there are kind of against this kind of stuff, and some of and of course there are some that are for it. But still, in today's society, in today's media, it wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't put it past them to add it or put it in there. I mean, they put lesbian stuff in at times in movies, um, multimedia movies, all the time, almost. I mean, people freaking accused Frozen of doing it, even though that was cis, even though that wasn't the case. People accused Frozen of doing it, and that wasn't the case. So, yeah, I think Revolutionary Utena would be good. I think Trigon would be a good one. I think it's it, that's got potential right there. Trigon's got a potential right there. I mean, what more can you ask from that? What more can you ask from that? And and then speaking of animes that can have great live action features, why not finally freaking do a Sailor Moon one? I mean, you got a new Sailor Moon anime out, sort of a reboot, if you will. Why not bring finally get a Sailor Moon feature film on the on the way? I mean, to me, that would be the best, this is probably the best opportunity, the best time you got. You know? And if you want to, even though it's been a, just a few years, or well, what has it been, like four years, five years, you could actually start planning out doing an, a more proper Dragon Ball live action feature. A more proper one. And follow the tr- and follow the true source material with it. I mean, there's a lot of animes, you, a lot of animes that could benefit from live action features. Some I even like, like, or well, I'm kind of intrigued with, like, like you could do one. With, I mean, heck, with CGI and everything, you like to blend CGI and live action. How about do a live action remake of Baji, the Mighty Monster of Nature? Why not do that? Why not do a live action remake of Bandar, the thousand year Bandar book, the uh, thousand year journey or something like that. One thousand year journey. A one thousand year trip, that's what it is. Bandar book, one thousand year trip. Both done by the godfather of the Disney of anime at the time of Titsugu. Why not do that? I mean, heck, they're thinking of doing, I think they're planning a live action Kiki delivery series which was done by Hayao Miyazaki, you know, there's your proof right there, so why not do those? I mean, these are just animes that I think need to get full-length feature films uh, uh, made of, especially, like, like I said, with today's technology, who knows how far you can go with them. I mean, Looped in the Third can definitely, I mean, Looped in the Third's got a be- fan base, do a live-action feature on that. What what is another? What what about 
Oh, here's one. Here's one. What about one of the more recent ones that they have out? Vivid Red Operation. Think about that. That could definitely benefit from a live action feature, especially with the way, you know, with the te technology that we have and everything. I mean, it would be tremendous. It would be tremendous. I mean, it would be a great, to me, if it's done right, it could be good. That's the way I look at it. I mean, heck, you know, you have Yu-Gi-Oh! Do a live action feature on Yu-Gi-Oh! And do it based on the original Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, so to me, these are just animes I think they could really benefit. Just listing off a few that I think could really benefit from live action uh, theatrical uh, features. And that's basically all I could say for now. That's all I'm going to say for this uh, podcast of topics on my mind. Um, let me know what you guys think of some of the topics I've mentioned here. Take your time with this audio. I know it's a long one and I apologize for that. So, But take your time. Let me know what you guys think. And I will talk to you all later. But again, these are just my topics on my mind and my opinions. Peace out. God bless.